The Yoga 730 15, released in mid-2018, is a 15-inch 2-in-1 laptop with optional NVIDIA graphics and the choice between an i7 and an i5, both of which are quad-core. This includes KB Lake refresh models such as the 8650, which is the KB Lake refresh of the i7. Soldered to the board are 8GB of DDR4 RAM running at 2400MHz, which can be upgraded to 16GB on Lenovo.com. There is an option for a 144p display. This laptop also has a fingerprint sensor and it starts at $1,030 off sale with my configuration costing about $1,300. However, this device is usually on sale on Lenovo.com so you can usually get it for less than that. Apart from just basic specs, this laptop also supports Wacom styluses, specifically the Wacom Bamboo Ink, as well as the Lenovo Active Pen 1 and 2. There's no built-in holder for the stylus, but the Active Pen 2 at least comes with a little holder for it that plugs into the USB Type-A port. Unfortunately, this closes off a USB Type-A port, but it's still a good solution in my opinion. There is a Thunderbolt 3 port on the side, USB-C, but it appears to be only two PCIe lanes according to both a support person on Lenovo.com and some things I've seen online. I haven't been able to test it, I do not have an eGPU, but it appears to be only two PCI lanes, so keep that in mind. I mentioned Type-A ports, which there are two of. A new addition to the 730 as opposed to the 720 is an HDMI port. It has a keyboard backlight, a precision touchpad, which seems to be glass, and again, it's a two-in-one with a full 360 degree hinge, a microphone array on the display, and JBL speakers, which I think sound pretty good. The overall construction of this device is made out of aluminum, which feels pretty rigid. It comes in two different colors, iron gray and platinum, of which I have the platinum unit. The iron gray is kind of a black. However, the aluminum on this laptop scratches really easily, so keep that in mind. You're going to want to have a skin or some kind of cover on this if you put it in your bag. However, one of the main parts of the body, which are not aluminum, are the hinges, which are made of plastic, and they don't quite color match to the aluminum, but it's pretty close. On the right side, the hinge is a little asymmetrical. That looks like there's a pin missing, but that's just how it's designed. But the hinges work pretty well. They support the laptop fine in tent mode, and you can open it with one finger, but I don't think that's a particularly valid test of much than just the hinge being light at one point and heavy at the other. Now, this is a two-in-one, but keep in mind, it's quite heavy. I wouldn't suggest using it in tablet mode, and you probably won't be if you pick one up. It's not very comfortable, and you shouldn't expect to use it like that. The fingerprint sensor is pretty great. I think it works decently well. I don't have much experience with laptop fingerprint sensors, but this one seems to be at least 75% accurate. It might also be my finger placement, but uh, it's not as good as, say, like an iPhone or a Samsung smartphone. There are big rubber feet on the bottom, specifically a big long one along the back of the device, which holds the laptop up enough so it can get a decent amount of air when it's on a flat surface. Now we'll move on to performance. Now this laptop has some significant heat problems. I did my testing using ADA64 stability test and Heaven for GPU stressing. I used throttle stop to disable Lenovo's excessive throttling and also set the performance mode in Lenovo Vantage to performance. When stressing with stock thermal paste, the i7 is just not able to be handled by the heatsink. It approaches 90C and even hits 100 at times with just how bad it is. I suggest strongly repasting if you plan on gaming on this unit, um, especially if you plan on doing combined loads. I experienced downclocking to 800 megahertz on all four cores during gaming in some sessions. The i5 model might fare a bit better, but it probably won't in my opinion. It's pretty much the same as the i7 except clocked down, and at full load on the i7 it runs basically at i5 speeds, so it's not going to make much of a difference. Like I said, without modifications, it throttles down to about 800 megahertz for basically no reason at some times. It seems to be some sort of software throttling rather than a thermal throttle, but it's still annoying. The GPU power limits and it's basically impossible to overclock, so don't consider doing that. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't say it power limits, it voltage limits, which I will get into later. The GPU does boost and it sits at boost clock, but if you try to overclock it, it won't go over boost clock at load. The CPU power limits at about 28 watts which is not ideal. You get stuck at about 3.3 gigahertz instead of the advertised speeds, which is unfortunate. And the stock thermal setup, of course, lets temperatures to 
run away and get too high, and then you get hardware level th thermal throttling. Thermal situation is definitely improved by repasting. I use Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut, but temperatures still reach the high 80s, peaking into the 90s on occasion, especially in real world tests like GTA 5. In the video you can see, I was running the stress test. Ambient temperatures were at 68 degrees Fahrenheit that day. I wasn't sure exactly what it was in my room, but it definitely felt pretty warm. So temperatures were a bit higher than normal. However, that's not an excuse for the temperatures it was hitting. The thermal setup is definitely not adequate for this device. Now gaming performance, as you can see in the video here, I was running GTA 5 at about 60 FPS at mixed high to normal settings. Um, it can't run at the highest settings possible, mostly due to limitations of the GTX 1050 more than heat itself. And it will run really hot unless you repaste. Before repasting, CPU would throttle really bad, like I said earlier, about 800 megahertz. If you use throttle stop with the stock thermal paste, you can lock it at about 2 gigahertz and it will work okay, but that's kind of a workaround and I would suggest not doing that. Now TF2, I was running TF2 and honestly I can't say that it's playable on this device for reasons I'll go into later. It does run at a decent frame rate, but that's not the main problem. Watch Dogs 2, don't expect to run that, and anything that's about as stressful is not going to work that well. So yeah, like I said at the beginning, there are quite a few big issues with this laptop. For one, the stock Realtek drivers for the speakers and microphone cause a keyboard lag, believe it or not. I'll show the problem on screen here. You can see I'm typing a letter repeatedly and it seems to be stuttering. And then once you delete some files from the Realtek driver, it suddenly stops lagging. Why this happens? It's some kind of weird proprietary software that the Realtek driver has bundled with it that causes the lag. But I think this is totally unacceptable to have problems with, especially on a laptop that costs about a thousand bucks or more at retail. However, the problem is not unsolvable. You can delete the files, but I still think it's ridiculous. My particular unit had some panel gaps on it between just the aluminum on the display and a little piece of plastic, but it wasn't anything too bad. The fans in this laptop are not controllable, so you can't manage the heat yourself. You can't crank them up to 100%, which is kind of a bummer in my opinion, but it seems to be pretty common with a lot of consumer laptops these days. Also, reinstalling Windows seems to pretty much break Vantage. You have to jump through some hoops if you want to try to get Vantage running again. And even then, it just, it do, it's just, it just doesn't seem worth it. Also, like I said, thermal situation is not adequate, but there is one really substantial issue with this laptop, and that is Wi-Fi. Now, this laptop ships with a Realtek Wi-Fi card, and that by itself is not great. That Realtek card basically just disconnects and drops Wi-Fi connections like crazy. It's just, it's just bad. It's not... I would replace it immediately if you pick one up with it, or just have Lenovo replace it for you with an RMA because they are known to do that. Now that's not the only Wi-Fi problem this laptop has. I thought I was just the only one experiencing this, but after doing some research it seems other people have ran into the same problem I have. Was that problem? Well, just watch. So you can see that I have internet right now and I'll launch a game, specifically TF2, and TF2 will launch, and as you can see, it seems to be working fine, seem to be connected, but when I go to find servers, look at that, there are no servers, and if I hit shift tab, looks like Steam's disconnected all of a sudden. So if we close out of the game, well look at that, no internet. And that happens every single time you have the power connected and you launch a game. It's just, it just can't handle it. Here's an example, I'm spectating in a TF2 match right now, and as you can see, the power is not connected to the laptop on the left there. Now once I plug it in, after a short period of time, you can see suddenly the game stops and my connection drops. So what this means is 5 GHz is entirely unusable when you're gaming, which is just totally unacceptable. The only way to use this laptop is running on 2.4 GHz it seems, which is just not, no. No, it's not, it's not okay. It's not okay at all. And that's the main reason why I simply cannot recommend this laptop. It has a nice look and it feels nice in the hand, but I, 
really, really, really cannot recommend it with that significant problem. It's going to be basically unusable for gaming. Which, for a laptop that's marketed as a gaming-ready laptop, I don't, I don't think that's okay. I, I think you'd agree with me that that's not okay. Why this happens when it's plugged in? I don't know. It seems to be running out of power or something, and it's... the. I mean, I've seen the CPU limiting at voltage, which seems to be the problem, but I'm not entirely sure. It just seems to be a major design flaw with this laptop. It can't handle the graphics card, it can't supply enough power to the Wi-Fi card when the graphics card is under load. No idea, but ultimately, just don't pick one up. Even if it's on sale, you should pick up something like the Y740 or the Y530, both Legion laptops, and they're definitely better choices than this laptop, especially if you're going to be trying to game. The only downside is they're not two-in-ones, and they do look slightly more gamery than this one would, but there are also other alternatives. If you know anyone that seems to be planning on buying one of these laptops, I suggest that you show them this video so they know exactly what they're getting into. But otherwise, that's all for now. If you have any other questions about this device, feel free to leave any questions in the comments, and if you found this video helpful, make sure to leave a like.